traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. This week we have senators getting satellite phones in case of a man-made or natural disaster so they can be a continuation of government. We have even the Panama Canal that's starting to have problems. They're adding restrictions because of the situation with the lack of water. And we even have Elon Musk making moves with Neuralink. If you guys don't know what that is, I'll explain it in a second. It's the chip that they put in your head to be able to help you with you know, various ailments. Let's go ahead and get started. main item this week is the situation with the debt talks i don't know if you guys have been following the news a lot of you guys leave the comments that you only listen to these videos which is great leave your like and subscribe but uh you know they, they report that there's a deal there's no deal they walked out this and that it's been like this huge drama session supposedly they have an agreement thanks to that now the markets for the most part in the u.s went up canada and the dow were the only markets that actually went down one of the things I wanted to mention to you guys as well that I saw, you know, while I kind of review all the information and get the information for the recap is in the last 20 years, meaning from 2002 to 2022, the salaries for workers have gone up 27%. The cost of a home has gone up 148%. And it's interesting because, you know, now with the inflation the way it is, and I'm going to tell you guys, because I know you guys like this when I tell you, I was just in the United States and I love sushi, so even, you know, Publix isn't that good, but, you know, if you're, if you're in a pinch, you stop by Publix and get the sushi. I went Aiden places, the airport, there's another place in Tampa that's really good, the stores and Publix, but everywhere I went, now the sushi that they're serving are only eight rolls instead of 10. When I grew up, $6, maybe eight, right? Now, $16, $12 you know before it's 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 literally what i'm trying to explain is eight sushi rolls instead of 10 is a 20 percent increase in price because you're getting less and you're paying more and the price is now you're paying you know 16 bucks 15 bucks sometimes 20 for for the rolls of sushi so you're looking at now i said before we were looking at maybe a 20 to 30 percent inflation rate i told you guys the story about five guys where i'm basically paying double I think we're at now a 40 to 50% inflation rate, right? I don't think you guys have noticed it maybe, but we're definitely at those rates now. Another thing I found that was really interesting in regards to the debt, because it's been in the news recently, is our debt now is at $31.4 trillion. We now are spending $1 trillion per year just on the interest payments. That's about 20% of all the tax revenue is just going to pay for the debt, 20%. That's more than defense. And if you didn't know, the United States pays, I think, more than the next 15, 20 countries combined on defense. And soon, if we continue at the same rate, because we're just adding even more debt, we're going to be paying more for the interest on the debt, even for Medicare and Social Security. So we're literally going to make ourselves bankrupt because of the interest on the debt that we're coming out. Oh, and just so you know, 80, 90 percent of all the dollars that were ever printed just happened since the pandemic, since 2020. So get ready because things are going to get fun. In the other con conspiracy theory news of the week, members of the U.S. Congress, U.S. Senate, excuse me, were recently offered satellite phones that will allow them to communicate in case of a, quote, man-made or natural disaster, according to the report. I find this to be extremely unusual because of the, the government coin stuff that they've been talking about, the digital currencies for the government, the CBDCs, the debt problem that we're having now on June 1st. So keep an eye out because Conspiracy Marcello doesn't sniff something's not right. Overseas market news, mostly negative in Europe, Italy big, being the biggest loser there. Latin American markets were mostly mixed with my dear, dear, beautiful Colombia having the biggest loser this week. Africa and the Middle East was mixed, South Africa being the biggest loser. And in the far, far east, we have the Hang Seng in Hong Kong, the most negative of all the markets that were negative there in the far east. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news. Crypto exchange volume now is at a all time low because of, uh, you know, maybe because it's the companies going bankrupt. 
or the the you know not having these meme coins explode. Uh, there's also another crypto exchange that went bankrupt this week, which is called the Hotbit. They were announcing to their customers that they should withdraw their funds by the 21st of June. And the EU, the European Union's financial markets regulator, is warning investment companies to ensure that their clients know that digital assets like crypto are going to remain unregulated in jurisdictions for the time being. So be careful because Bitcoin is dangerous. Bitcoin is lower for the week, down 0.64%. It's at about 26,700, really hasn't moved that much over the last few weeks. In commodities, the Panama Canal hit by shipping restrictions because of the water crisis, which is set, set to worsen. If you guys don't know how the Panama Canal works, you know, there's, there's a piece of land that's that's uh, Panama, and then they have the ocean on this side, the ocean on the other side, and they have a lake in the middle, and that's what allows them to connect and level kind of where the water is. Well, now the water in the lake is getting so low that they're having to put restrictions on these big tankers because remember they just built the Panama Canal 2.0, which would allow the super tankers to come in. And now they're having to add restrictions because of the drought that they're having because the lake doesn't have enough water. In addition to that, olive oil prices, if you cook with olive oil, now is going to be at its highest price. It just reached its highest price in 10 years due to the drought in Spain. The drought, if you remember, I think it was about two weeks ago, I let you guys know that the fifth largest hydro plant in Spain had to be shut down because their water levels were too low. Now Spain, which accounts for 40% of all the olive oil in the world, is going to be not shut down, but severely reduced the production due to the fact that they're having problems with water as well. And in other places, for example, like here in Colombia, it doesn't stop raining. So it's like freak weather everywhere. Crude has its second week being positive. Both the US and Brent were positive. They're both at about 72, 76 bucks or so. And the dollar strengthened quite a bit this week. And because of that, the precious metals came down. Gold went down by over 1.6% to 1947 and 20 cents, while silver went down to 2.22%, negative to 23.41. Silver only went down, what, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, about 50 cents or so. But it kind of looks big because the value of silver is kind of lower. Financial and banking news in New Zealand, their central bank decided to continue hiking rates. They went up by 25 basis points to 5.5%. Bank of Korea left rates the same at 3.5. And the finance uh, minister, Jeremy Hunt in the UK, said that they would be comfortable raising rates, causing an econ economic contraction or a recession in the UK as long as inflation comes down. Keep in mind that the UK is the sixth or seventh largest economy in the world, so that can have a big effect overall on everyone. The minutes from the Fed, which is the central bank in the United States, there now seems to be two groups that are divided on raising rates in the June meeting. The first group is obviously worried about the inflation situation and they want to continue to raise rates to cause more bank failures, obviously. And the second group says that because the inflation rate has already come down, they might look to actually keep them the same. So we'll see what actually happens with that. Chase, the biggest bank in the United States by assets, decided to cut 500 jobs this week, less than 1% of their workforce. One of the things that I thought was really interesting about what they actually reported was now that we have these kind of hybrid work dynamics with with a lot of the companies where you maybe come in just a few times a week and you know a lot of people are working from home with that flexibility, Chase is now reporting that their metro office vacancy rates rose 19% in quarter one, which is the highest level on record. This basically means that they're just not using their offices. And this is a bigger problem if we kind of, you know, this is why I like to do these videos because we kind of connect the dots. Commercial real estate, like office buildings and other all commercial real estate, they don't get 30 year mortgages like we get for residential places, right? They have to renew their loans every, you know, seven, 10. I think I, I've seen some at 15 years, which is rare. If I'm if I'm wrong on these years, obviously put them there in the comments, no big deal. But that the idea is that they have to renew these. So what's gonna happen now when these companies that built these buildings have to renew their loans, but they're not getting the income anymore? So now the value of these properties are going to go down by quite a bit. And if the value goes down, that means that the banks that actually lent at the much higher rate is going to be a big problem because now they're losing all that money because the asset that they lent the money for actually went down by quite a bit. You see how that works? That could lead to a lot of systemic problems into the financial system, which already 
It's on and it's on crutches. In economic news, the economic growth in the Eurozone edged down in May to a three-month low due to a drop in industrial production. The final reading in May for the consumer sentiment was slightly above expectations, but it went down 7% because of the worries about the economy. In Germany, which is the fourth largest economy in the world after the US, China, and the J Japanese, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see my knee over here, but I can hear him snoring. Hopefully you guys can. I don't think so. It's a little dog I have. But uh, Germany being the fourth largest economy in the world has officially entered a technical recession. So it looks like we have a lot of flags when it comes to the global economy. Corporate news, Pfizer went up by over 5% as they have an oral drug now that leads to faster weight loss than other injections that they have now from Novo Nordic's diabetes d pill. I don't know about you guys, but if you want to lose weight, just stop eating and go to the gym. That's how we did it back in the day. We don't take pills for that. And this week, especially on Wednesday, the artificial intelligence stocks exploded uh, one of them being NVIDIA, they went up by over 24% on Thursday. I think for the week, they were up over 27%. And this is due to the fact that they make the majority of the AI chips, the processing chips that they need for the AI systems to run. Their stock so far this year is up almost 160%, over 100% year over year. Ford announced a new relationship, a partnership with Tesla, being that all the new Ford electric cars are going to have access to the 12,000 Tesla superchargers in US and Canada. Their shares rose by over 6%. And in technology, Elon Musk's one of many companies called Neuralink received a FDA approval to be able to launch an any human brain chip. And essentially what he's doing is they, they put a hole in your skull and then they go in and they put a chip in there. And for example, somebody who's paraplegic or somebody that I believe it may work with Alzheimer's, the chip will allow the computer to put the necessary connections in place to be able to go ahead and help those people that we don't have a solution for now. So that's going to be pretty cool, but they're going to have some negative effects as well. In international events, top Israel general raised the prospect of military action against Iran, even though the prime minister Netanyahu said that their national security advisor played down the imminent threat of a new underground nuclear facility by the Iranians. I think this is seeming to escalate a little bit. So I think we might have some go down in the Middle East, I would say between three to six months. I'm just doesn't smell right there. And an interesting fact this week, a California man, Mark Paulson, bought a bottle of wine that he bought in the 1970s for 250 bucks, the equivalent of about 100 and $1,900 in today's dollars, inflation adjusted. He sold that today for over $106,000. So if they tell you not to buy alcohol, that's what you, that's the story you can tell them. Archaeologists discovered a lost world of 417 ancient Mayan cities buried in the remote jungle. I believe this is in Guatemala, connected by miles of, quote, super highways. A lot of stuff we don't know about our history. If you guys haven't seen the program by Graham Hancock on Netflix called Ancient Apocalypse, Highly recommended. It. It's very good. And another interesting news that I thought was really weird is orcas, or you know the the the, the I don't know what you call them. Uh, they're the killer whales. They sunk three boats in Europe, and they appear to be teaching others to do the same as well. Why would killer whales be attacking boats? That's a news. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the preppers were right.